Hello, my name is Maria Podkalitova, and I'd like to share my research devoted to intercity corporate networks in former Soviet Union and COVID diffusion dynamics uh, also in the countries of the former Soviet Union. And the research incorporates my previous studies of economic interaction between former Soviet Union cities and the topic of COVID diffusion widely discussed currently. The research aims to reveal uh, interrelation between economic interaction and COVID diffusion dynamics for network structures. So, what's in common between COVID sprawl and intercity economic interaction? Why do we assume some interrelation between them existing? Mostly because uh, both processes, increasing intensity uh, uh, of economic connections and COVID diffusion are considered as global, depicting both uh, global trends and local specificity. As for economic networks, they have been precisely described in our previous works. Those networks are constructed based on structures of global companies following the research approach provided by Loveberg Group and personally Peter Taylor. Uh, these cities are, uh, uh, th their cities are considered uh, as nodes and flows of uh, information between them are, are considered as edges. Consequently, uh, the network is constructed. Uh, to uh, estimate flows of information between the cities, we assume that offices of the same global company exchange information and consequently are connected. We also assume that uh, the higher is office rank within corporate hierarchy, the more information it provides and receives. As a result, uh, we construct intercity network based on corporate structures of the global service companies. Two cities are regarded as connected if there is at least one global company with offices in both cities. And the uh, weight of this uh, connection uh, is uh, measured uh, based on the ranks of offices in a corporate hierarchy. Following uh, Taylor and his co-authors, uh, we picked the largest companies within uh, six advanced producer service sectors, accountancy, advertising, banking, insurance, law, and management. Uh, and we constructed intercity networks, uh, but not uh, on a global level, uh, as uh, Taylor does, uh, but uh, on the level of the former Soviet Union. Actually, we did it twice in 2015 and 2018. And uh, we already have uh, a paper there. A uh, network uh, for 2015 uh, is precisely uh, described. Uh, the economic networks are not uh, actually the key of the current research. Uh, here we assume uh, that the stronger is intercity connection, the more similar is dynamics of COVID diffusion. By intercity connection, we of course mean economic connection uh, from the previous uh, networks. Uh, and this is just our hypothesis, so we would like to check it. Uh, in order to study it, we took quite a small sample of 21 cities in three former Soviet Union countries, Russia, Ukraine, and Kazakhstan. Uh, all uh, of those countries faced pandemia in different moment and introduced measures of diverse severity to overcome it. Uh, we took only cities with population 1 million people and more. There are three in Ukraine, three in Kazakhstan, and 15 in Russia. 
Uh, those cities are supposed to be most vulnerable uh, to pandemia due to uh, high density and due to being uh, large transport hubs. Um, most of the cities are present in both economic networks. Exclusions are Omsk and Shimkent, that were poorly covered by global businesses uh, in 2015 and consequently not represented in 2015 economic network. Uh, data about COVID diffusion dynamics has been collected from official telegram channels of the authorities for the period between 24th of April and 4th of June in 2020. We took only data on a uh, number of infected. Yet, hope we will do more. Uh, in general, uh, COVID had diverse intensity in considered former Soviet Union states. Russia is leading by both absolute and the relative number of infected. It also faced a uh, pandemia very early uh, in the end of January. Uh, and uh, this moment, uh, the threat was not yet obvious. Besides that, in Russia, restriction measures have been mostly uh, less tough and uh, differed a lot depending on origin. Here is the COVID diffusion dynamics plotted for uh, our study 21 city. In different countries, statistics of COVID sprawl is provided by different authorities. Also, diverse sprawl of COVID testing is observed. Moreover, in some cities, data is provided only for urban area and in some for region. In order to overcome those diversity as much as possible, uh, we are uh, took a measure that depicts um, a number of infected on each day divided by a number of infected on previous day. Uh, the resulting diagrams for each city you can see here. Uh, we see that some of the diagrams look similar. Like here, uh, between Moscow and St. Petersburg, uh, we see resembling trends. See here and here, and other peaks uh, are more or less similar. This time lag in Saint Petersburg. Uh, so we would like to estimate how similar are those plots. To do it, uh, we employ dynamic time warping. This measurement is usually used in speech recognition to see if the signals are alike. The result was a matrix of likeliness for COVID-19 diffusion dynamics, where each city has been compared to all the others. Further, the most alike uh, diet, Moscow, St. Petersburg, have been taken for 100%, and all the others weighted compared to that one. The resulting measure depicted a relative similarity of COVID diffusion dynamics between cities. Based on that data, COVID diffusion dynamics network has been constructed. And this network is comparable uh, to the economic network we already had. Um, there are the uh, connectivity of each uh, H, the weight of each H, uh, have been weighted also uh, by uh, the weight of the leading H. So let's take a look at those networks. Uh, they are undirected uh, and economic networks uh, have been also limited by a number of 21 cities. As you see, our COVID network is uh, very more dense and uh, the edges there are more equal than in two other networks. Uh, there is no outstanding diet uh, we had in economic networks. You see here Moscow, Kiev, here Moscow, Kiev. Here we don't see anything that overwhelmingly leading. Mm. Uh, so let's take a precise look at uh, the edges and nodes of this network. 
first of all, uh, we um, took a look at most connected nodes. Uh, in economic networks, uh, the lists look uh, similar. Uh, but uh, in a COVID network, it differs dramatically. In economic networks, capitals and largest by population cities are leading, while in COVID network, Russian cities constitute the top five. Then, most connected diets or edges also differ a lot. Uh, they look stable uh, in economic networks between 2015 and 2018, connecting the leading centers. Meanwhile, in COVID network, all of them uh, link the couple of Russian cities, the couples of Russian cities. Uh, but as soon as all of our measures are relative and constructed through many assumptions, we need a measure that will uh, make it possible to compare the impact of different groups of cities on general structure of network. Uh, first of all, it's uh, an average weight of different types of edges. We considered groups of cities by country and capital to capital diets that are extremely valuable in economic networks. An average diet weight for Russian cities in COVID network is uh, um, four uh, times more than in our economic network in 2018. And it's also way higher than for Ukrainian and Kazakh cities. Uh, meanwhile, an average weight of capital to capital diets uh, in COVID network is twice less than in economic network in 2018. Uh, and then we looked at the share of those types of diets in total connectivity of the network. And in COVID diffusion dynamics network, it increased only for Russian cities. For the other types, uh, the share decreased, and the share of capital to capital diet decreased nearly seven times in COVID diffusion dynamics network. So the impact of uh, diverse types of diets is not similar in economic networks and in COVID diffusion dynamics network. Those networks are constructed by different principles. Capital to capital diets do not outstand in COVID network. To conclude, patterns of COVID diffusion dynamics are not similar to patterns of global economic connectivity depicted by service companies in former Soviet Union. COVID diffusion dynamics is way more alike in Russian cities than in Ukrainian and Kazakh cities. That might be a consequence of softer anti-COVID measures in Russia and larger time gap between first case and restrictions there. It seems that COVID diffusion dynamics in former Soviet Union states is more influenced by local conditions than by global processes. Thank you for your attention. And here are some references if you are interested. Thank you once again.